all right so let me just continue uh, from the previous video so here it is uh, the previous video we just saw how we can print out some text right now how about the you know can we do some mathematical calculations of course because obviously we know programming is about computation and solving some problems why not do some mathematics right okay so how do we do that well let me just uh, clear this one out so system dot out dot I think at this point you must be fairly familiar with println right and if I just hit enter this would be uh, generated now what if I want to do some computation let's say uh, I want to add 5 and 10 how do I do that well here it is 5 plus 10 let's uh, try and run and see what happens so if I right click and choose to run so it's 15 which is the right answer right 5 plus 10 is 15 and by the way if you're wondering where is save you usually don't need to save every time and if you still want to persistently save then you may wish to go to uh, file you see save all right that is sufficient if you haven't saved anything anyway don't worry about saving because uh, IntelliJ idea takes care for you now what if I want to add uh, 300 with the phi then it's pretty simple you need to go to println 300 plus phi let's uh, run it 305 right uh, well if I keep continuing I still have the ability to add as much as I wish to maybe I can even add with whatever number let's see what's going to happen now you see this produced the sum of all of these numbers and you know you may want to continue trying to uh, do this as well okay great now what if we want to divide the number by 25 let's uh, try and do it now divide by 25 and just try to run so it produces uh, the quotient which is 12 what if we want to find the remainder the remainder is obtained by adding a modulo sign which would produce the zero right and what if uh, I want to uh, you know multiply well pretty much simple all I need to do is put in the number and multiply how about this uh, you know how about a situation where I can uh, store this value into some variable into some location and then print out from that location you know I don't want to compute it during the println how about I try to store this into some value and then try to compute it from there uh, try to display it from there well that we have an option though we have an option too so that is actually called by implementing variables now let me give you an example I'll just type int and I'll say sum that is going to be equal to a uh, let's just say we want 300 plus 5 and then I will end it with a semicolon much like how I did here during println now if I put it inside of the bracket for print ln like this s u m I notice that I'm not adding any double quotes here I'm not adding any double quotes like this no this would then print the literal sum let me give you the difference you know let me show you the difference so here it is It'll, it's going to print out whatever there is inside the bracket which I don't want I want to rather print this value right so in that case I would delete the uh, quotes and then I am left out with system dot out dot print and sum s u m which is going to be 300 plus 5 so let's get started uh, if I just go to choose run so it's going to be 305 you notice the difference now this sum is called as let me 
add two forward slashes and then type something in English. Oops. Okay, so this is called as variables. What do you mean by a variable? A variable is a placeholder for data. You see, sum is a placeholder for 300 plus 5. It's like an empty cup. Think of variable like an empty cup. Now, what does an empty cup do? Empty cup has sufficiently fair amount of space for, you know, coffee or tea or juice to be contained in it, right? Now, if I just delete this out, now it's purely an empty cup. How do I fill it with some coffee? So some coffee is going to be something like this, 300 plus 5, or 800 plus 3, or 800 by 22. So this is filling up with the coffee, you know, this is the empty cup, the variable. Now the moment I fill it with some data, now this variable is going to be no more empty. So now this is called as declaration. Oops, declaration. Okay, now this phase is the declaration phase where we are telling, okay, computer initialize a variable. And then, now we are filling it with some data. So this is called, uh, let me just say, assignment. right and now that uh, this empty cup is filled with some value right and now I can say this is usage of the variable why because we are using this uh, some variable inside system dot out dot println now variables we just saw what is this int then you might be asking to yourself, well, this int is called as data type. Declaration of integer data type. To make it very clear for you, integer data type is something like this. Well, so sum is a variable of integer data type where integer means it is going to be just numbers. Think of it like numbers, negative and positive. So uh, you can have negative as well as positive when you're declaring integers because obviously that's what by default integers are. If you look around in the mathematics book, right, uh, it would just show you that integer is a number extending from negative side of the infinity to the positive side of the infinity. So, uh, you can have negative and positive numbers with an integer and uh, which even includes obviously zero also. One important criteria is that integers cannot become decimal numbers. So, for example, a proper integer could be phi or 10 or 100 or whatever but uh, can 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 be an integer no the answer is no so I mean you can go ahead like this maybe is 0 0.90 an integer no is uh, 10 110 an integer yes of course because any number with a decimal point is not regarded as an integer and this is just for your information because we will be dealing with integers in a different kind of a data type called as float and double which we will be discussing but at this point integer is a data type right which which just says that the following variable is going to be an integer variable it can hold numbers extending from negative of uh, the values to the positive of the values it even includes zero and then once you have an integer declared you need to set it up with some value because if I just don't do this step let's see what happens if I just try to uh, try to run this obviously this IntelliJ ID s suggests me with something what is called as an error error in line number eight and it says Java variable sum might have not been initialized. Now what this means 
is it's telling me that sum is not given its appropriate value. So we cannot, you know, coming back to our uh, t, uh, t and cup correlation, we cannot just drink a cup without tea in it, right, or juice in it. So let's put in some juice, which is to assign some value, maybe 50 by 6. It doesn't matter what value it is, but it needs to have some value in it so it can be reused further. So if I just click on run, now it's fixed. You see that? So, and, and notice, you know, you should notice one more thing. You might be wondering, how is 50 by 6 going to be equivalent to 8? Well, the answer is simple. The answer is that, you know, 50 by 6, if I pull out my uh, regular calculator, it is 50 by 6 is going to be 8.3333. And since we are telling that this sum is an integer and uh, the, the answer turned out to be 8.333, so what, we are, what the uh, compiler does, what the IDE does is that, you know, it chops out all the numbers after the decimal point because we are telling that it is not going to be a decimal point number, right? And if I want to display a, an actual authentic answer, then it's going to be float sum. Now float is what is called as a floating point number. This is going to be a data type which includes the decimal point numbers as well. So let's try and check what happens now when we say this as float. You see, it says 8.0. 